If you are considering purchasing a cheap off-brand chainsaw like this one from Amazon, the Supmix 6250, this video might be very helpful for you. In this video, I will attempt to give you the most thorough review of this saw to date. And also I will put timestamps below in the description so that you can jump to or fast forward to whatever section that you'd like to know. If you wanna go right to the conclusion, be my guest. I'll give you a very quick summary right now. In a nutshell, I put about five or six gas tanks through it. It did really well overall and I used it until I broke it. Why am I doing this review? When I got online to look at a few reviews of this saw, I was immediately disappointed and also mildly infuriated. Uh, one guy didn't even use the saw, barely unboxed it, and the other guy barely even used it. And they're calling these reviews, which is a joke. If I take the time to make a video about a product, I'm going to take the time to also use it. I do not half-ass my videos. I do not half-ass my product reviews. Why do I have this saw? Why this saw in particular? I received this saw as a gift from somebody that knows that I use a chainsaw a lot, but he also knows that I only have one up until that point. And kind of like the saying goes when you're saving digital files, one is none and two is one. You just sort of need to have another one handy. Here are the specs for the Supmix 6250. This is a 62cc engine. It comes with a 20 inch bar, weighs about 14 pounds and will cost you 150 bucks. And compared to my steel 271, which comes with a 50cc engine, comes with an 18 inch bar and will cost you $470 brand new. So quite a difference. As I began to unbox this chainsaw, I was sort of impressed with all the little extras they give you along with the saw. They give you a chain cover, a tool bag with a bunch of goodies inside, a mixing bottle, a funnel, and an extra chain. Inside the tool bag is a three-way hex key, your standard chainsaw wrench, a spare spark plug, an extra pull cord, which you know is kind of useless because I'm sure the spring would break before the cord does. There's your sharpening file, a small flathead, the dog, and the screws you need to attach the dog to the power head. All right, this thing is together. Let's go beat it up a little bit. To start things off, I thought we'd go a little bit easy on the saw. This is just a dead fir that I have laying down. I actually took this tree down with a council tool woodcraft ax, which is something I'm also creating a review about. So, you know, maybe it's worth subscribing if you wanna see the review of that ax. It's up to you. Here's something I noticed and appreciated right from the beginning is that this thing started right up with no issues. You pull the choke out, you give it two, three, or four pulls. It gives you the half start. You put the choke back in. You give it another two or three pulls and the thing will start right up. And over the course of several weeks of using the saw, never had an issue starting it. But Ryan, that's just a dead tree. All right, let's do something a little more interesting. How about we fell a hemlock? Now you can see that this tree is already dead, but nevertheless, it does take a little bit of extra juice to cut through the stump of the tree. But we know we're not always gonna be cutting dead trees, so how about a live one? I have to apologize, I didn't film the felling of this birch, but it's a decent sized tree, it was live, and I cut through the stump several times and did a pretty good job. The feel of the saw. Now, I know this is somewhat of an arbitrary form of measurement, but when you pick up a tool, when you hold it in your hand, you kind of want it to feel hardy, like it has some mass. And that mass is sort of, you know, equivalent of its worth. And when I picked up the chainsaw, I expected it to feel very cheap, uh, but it actually has a pretty good feel to it. It's got some weight, it's got some mass to it. It doesn't feel quite as as what I expected $150 chainsaw to feel like. A 62cc engine I think is a good middle ground for a multi-use saw. 
like a cleanup saw or firewood saw, it sits right in the middle of the spectrum. So your smaller saws aren't gonna be able to handle um, you know, a, a stump or just a large tree in general. But if you go you know, upwards to the 90cc engines, those things are very cumbersome to lug around and to hold, and they're a lot more tiring to use. So this size engine, I think, is a good size for most people. This is the largest log that I cut with the Supmix saw. And I was actually curious how big it was. Almost 21 inches. If you are watching this review, you might be somebody who is just about to get into chainsaw ownership. And what I wanna make sure of is that you're not afraid of doing basic maintenance to your own saw. Outside of just putting in a quality fuel mix and maintaining your bar oil inside the reservoir, there's just three things you need to do. Number one, regularly tighten and sharpen your chainsaw. Number two, remove the air filter and clean it. And number three, pull out your spark plug every once in a while and make sure that that is also clean. I did find tightening the chain to be a little bit cumbersome based on the design. Uh, the design has the tightening screw butted up really close to the bar so that if you're trying to use that normal chainsaw wrench, it's gonna be a little bit awkward. I also tried to use the small flathead that they included and that didn't have enough torque. The air filter is easy to access, but it's kind of an uncommon design. It's just pressed plastic and I'm not completely sold that this is actually going to do a great job at filtering out all the fine dust. Now with this one, you can see that there is particles on the outside of the filter, which means it is working. But when I took it off, I also found out that there was some gunk on the intake there. And I noticed that that rubber gasket had moved probably from vibration. But if you take the air filter off every once in a while and just clean it and look at the intake, you can keep the engine clean. There's actually a recess on the back of this air filter. And so I think the best way to do it is to tuck it in here first and then slide this on. If you put the gasket down there and try to slide your air filter on, it probably just won't seat correctly. The on off switch. So a little while into using this saw, I noticed that I was having trouble starting it. Not because there was an actual malfunction, but it was because I kept flicking the switch to the off position. And what would happen is I would pull that cord and as I would let it go, I think that it would hit that switch and it would knock it down, which is in the, in the off position. And if you're just doing that repeatedly, you're not really paying attention to that switch. It's in the off position that the chainsaw is not going to start. And so it just takes an extra second to just continually look at that switch, make sure it's in the up position while you start it. While using this saw for a handful of weeks, this has come to be really my chief and only complaint of the saw in general, is the on-off switch. And this is what ended up breaking. I was just using the saw like normal, trying to turn it on and off, and the lever snapped right off. Store. This is all and it does still work and that is exactly the point where i decided to stop using the saw i found the replacement part on amazon for only six dollars with a dollar sixty shipping so in conclusion is this saw worth buying is it worth 150 bucks it's not an exact yes or no question it depends on who you are and how you plan to use this saw so who is this saw for this saw is designed for light use. So if you are a homeowner and you need to do a little bit of maintenance around the house every once in a while, or if you moved into a place that has a wooded driveway and every once in a while a tree is going to come down, if you're somebody who needs to do a little bit of cleanup from time to time and you're willing to cut your own firewood but you don't necessarily do that all the time, this saw might be a really good fit for you. If you're somebody who uses a saw on a regular basis, you probably already know this. This is not some, a saw that you want to rely on as your primary. For me, what I decided is that this saw is going to make a great backup. I'll put the new switch on the saw 
and then I'll put it up on my shelf. I'll run the saw a few times every year to keep the engine fresh and it'll just be my backup. But for those of you who only need to use a chainsaw occasionally, I think this saw could work out really well. But honestly, there are other ways around that if you don't want to go through the hassle of owning and storing and maintaining a saw, you could always call your neighbor, you could call a friend, heck, you could call me if you wanted to. You could rent one, or if you don't wanna deal with any of that and doing it yourself, you can just call somebody and have them do the work for you. So there's a lot of ways to skin that cat. As always, thank you for watching. If you're one of the few who made it to this point in the video, I wanna give you an extra special thank you because you are one of the few. If you found this video to be interesting, entertaining, or educational in any way, please hit that like button. If you want more content like this about living your best life in the woods, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.